Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. Kick-ass advice and tips for membership site owners. Well, hello there and welcome to a very special episode of the Membership Guys podcast. Why is it a special episode? It is episode 100. That's right, one zero zero. We made it. We're still here, and we are extremely grateful for all of your support and for listening to our show for almost two years now. We really, really, really appreciate it. And to show that appreciation, I've got an awesome, awesome show lined up for you today. Because it's episode one hundred, we're doing something a little bit different. To celebrate our centennial, we have reached out to people out there who are running membership sites across different industries, people who are big names within their particular market, people who are just kind of starting out or they're building their way up, people where memberships have gone fantastically well and some where maybe they haven't quite gone as planned. And we've tapped into their brains to get their insight, their tips and their advice to share with you. But before we dive into those insights, I just want to remind you that the Membership Guys podcast is brought to you by membersiteacademy.com. If you're serious about growing a successful membership website, you absolutely need to be inside membersiteacademy.com. Not only do we have the biggest and most extensive library of courses, training and resources to help you make your membership plans a reality. We have an awesome supportive community who are there to help you in your membership journey. Head on over to membersiteacademy.com and check it out. All right, so I had the great, great pleasure of being able to reach out to some of my friends, some of our members and people within our community to ask for their insights, to have them share with you their advice, their experiences in running and growing membership websites. And I asked these guys three questions. So in today's show, I'm going to go through those three core questions and you're going to hear from a variety of different people, as well as get my take and my input on the sort of key messages and the key things that are coming through. So first of all, I asked these guys, what is your one piece of advice for anybody starting a new membership website? Hey, this is Chris Ducker from youpreneur.com. And my number one piece of advice that I would give to anyone wanting to start a membership business is to make sure that you are willing to show up. Think about it logically. You want your members to pay you in an ongoing, recurring basis. Therefore, you have to show up and show the value behind being part of your community on an ongoing basis as well. Not only will that income for you be recurring, and predictive, but it will also mean that the relationships that you build as part of the founder of that community will be so much deeper and so much more rewarding for your members. So make sure you are ready and willing to show up. Most importantly, I'd say that this is not something that you just set and forget. There's a lot of work wrapped up in here, particularly in the early days when perhaps not as much money is coming in as you would like. You've still got to show up. You've still got to create the content. You've still got to do all the support. Sometimes it's even the tech side, particularly if you're on a small budget. So I'd say it's like running a website. If you've run a website already, you'll know that there's lots that goes in and it's just never finished. And I think a membership is exactly the same way. So if you've got passion for it, then I would say go for it. But just remember, you've got to get stuck in and you've got to keep going. It's a lot like being a parent. You have a responsibility. A lot of marketers are so focused on filling their membership, they forget they have customers And I've made a point of difference with my membership by turning up every day. In fact, a lot of the people I coach, their first question is, how can I have a membership and not be involved in it and never show up? And I think sometimes they're missing the point. A membership will really suit someone who is a nurturer, who uh, likes being social and caring for members. Now, of course, you don't have to have a forum-based membership like I do. And perhaps you can put together information products and maybe you don't do support or products. But I will say this, if you are able to put together some kind of forum element or dynamic element, and a lot of people use Facebook groups for this these days, 
make sure you show up because it's really going to help your customers get results, but it also does something else. It sharpens you up and makes you really aware of the challenges your audience are having, and it keeps your finger on the pulse. Okay, so that was Chris Ducker from youpreneur.com, Ben Adam Smith from houseplanninghelp.com, and James Shramko from superfastbusiness.com sharing their one piece of advice for anyone thinking of starting a new membership site. And the common theme that these guys are talking about is the importance of showing up, of actually serving your members. And it's funny that James Shramko mentioned one of the things we chatted about when I interviewed him several episodes ago now. I think it was possibly around about episode 30, episode 40. And something that came up when we were talking was the fact that you get people creating membership sites And one of the first things on their list in terms of their priorities and trying to figure out their strategy is trying to figure out how they can avoid having to actually take part in their community, how they can do as little work as possible. And the thing is, you just can't have that approach with a membership site. You need to show up and serve. You need to recognize that if you're a credible authority within your industry, then a big part of why people will be joining your membership is that they want some form of access to you. They're not expecting the world. They're not expecting too much. They just want to be able to rub shoulders with you to know that if they post up a question within the community, you will see it and you'll give some form of response. And so you absolutely need to be prepared as a membership site owner to show up and serve. And the fact that you have guys like Chris Ducker and James Schramko who've been around this space for a long time in terms of building an online business and they build very successful businesses, reinforcing the importance of showing up and serving your members just emphasizes how important it is. And I love the fact that Ben Adam Smith, despite still being relatively early on within his membership journey, He has that ingrained into him, and that's one big thing that obviously he's picked up through the initial stages of growing his membership too. The fact you have to make time to serve the members who join your site. It's not a set it and forget it kind of business. What's the one piece of advice you'd give to anyone thinking of starting a membership site? Well, can I give two? Because the first piece of advice would definitely become a member of the Member Site Academy. It has changed everything for me. I don't know where I would be without Members Night Academy. It basically took me from point one to two to three to four. And I just learned so much along the way. And every time I have a question, this is the place I come back to. So definitely invest in the Members Night Academy. And no, they did not pay me to say that. It's just, I really love it. And then number two is plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead. We planned several months ahead and I still think we probably could have added on a few months to get everything ready to launch. The one piece of advice I think that's the most important is to be patient with your build. I think it takes potentially longer than you think it's going to be. And there's times where you feel like it's going nowhere. And I think the key is just to be patient. And, you know, a part of that is about getting around the right people, which is a lot of what you guys do and making sure that we've got other member member site owners around you doing the same thing. So yeah, be patient in your build. Please allow yourself way more time than you think you're going to need. The tech stuff that can happen. I mean, there were weeks when I thought I was never going to get this thing done. I did everything myself, built it from scratch. I joined the academy to help me figure a lot of this tech stuff out. And it was so awesome. So I had originally thought I was going to be launching in January. So I launched at the end of April. So I ended up launching four months after I really was hoping to. You just don't know what's going to go wrong. Just plan extra time for it. Thank you to Heather Crabtree from the SavvyCommunity.com, Christina Peters from Food Photography Club, and Chris Marr from the Content Marketing Academy for their one piece of advice that they'd give to anyone starting a new membership site. You know, we're always telling people that when they're trying to get everything in place, when they're creating their content, they're building their membership, to take however much time you think it's going to take you and double it. Because we always underestimate just how much goes in to building your membership, getting everything right, getting everything how you want it to be. Now, on the flip side of that, you don't want to go too far in the other direction and find yourself in a place 12 months down the line where you're still messing around, trying to get everything perfect, fine-tuning designs and tinkering and changing your technology. 
at some point you need to pull the trigger. So while I absolutely agree with Heather, Christina and Chris about giving yourself enough breathing room to do all the things you need to do, you don't want to go too far in the direction of just ending up procrastinating. You need eventually to pull the trigger and actually launch your membership. If I were to give you, the potential member site owner, one piece of advice, it would be stop thinking and just do it. Now, that doesn't mean don't have any plan whatsoever, but you have to remember that a membership site is about the value you add to your members, which, frankly, that means content. What content are you going to deliver? What does that content look like? What message are you trying to help them understand? The tech stuff? That just doesn't really matter. As Mozart said, it's just scribbling. You can figure that stuff out later once you know what value you're going to add. For that matter, you can even launch on kind of a bootstrap setup and let your members help dictate what some of that tech should be. Speaking from the perspective of somebody that completely redesigned his membership site from the ground up, completely re-architected it five years after launch, And I was able to make my technical decisions based on what my members had told me. Now the site not only provides good content, but my members felt like they had a hand in helping to build the tech side of it, the bells and whistles, the user experience, all that stuff, it turns out, was secondary to the message, to the content that I was actually providing. I would say the one most important piece of advice uh, that I would give to somebody that's thinking of starting a membership site, which means they has they haven't yet started it, would be to start and then build versus build and then start. And here's what I mean by that. I think it's really important when you are thinking of starting a membership site to actually launch it. And then as as you are building it up, and I know this might be a little bit counterintuitive, but as you are building it up, maybe you get some people that sign on and become part of your membership site, even though you only have a tiny little bit of content. But what that allows you to do is that allows you to get some traction early on to be excited about that. Uh, Maybe it's the first sale or maybe it's one or two people coming on board and even just asking what's involved with the membership site or what it costs to join. Any of those little early interactions make a really big difference in terms of getting traction and getting started. And then also what starting early allows you to do is to pivot and change based on those really early users. So Maybe you think you know what your audience wants, but because you started before you built it, you started and then continued to build as you went along, you'll start to get that early feedback and you might realize that people actually want something that's very different and you can tailor that to your audience. So by the time that you would have launched before, maybe it's three, four, five, six months down the line, what you'll actually have is a really better fit and a better product. You know, quite often we find when people are just spinning their wheels, taking months and months and months to get their membership in a state that they're happy launching, it usually comes down to them simply not really understanding what they're creating. Maybe they've rushed into actually building a membership site. They haven't done any sort of research. They haven't validated their idea. They haven't actually spoken to their market and their audience to make sure what they're creating is right for them. And that's something when we spoke to Andrew and Pete from andrewandpete.com, Colin Gray from the podcasthost.com and Nathan Chan from founder.com. It all essentially comes back to having that greater understanding of who you're actually creating your membership site for. My one piece of advice is don't follow the crowd. Don't listen to the gurus. And (laughs) I mean, listen to you guys, listen to Mike and Kelly. But the thing that I discovered was that I kind of just copied the standard old membership model, uh, thinking that other people were making it work for them, but uh, that would mean it works for me. But actually, turns out that my members didn't like a lot of the different things that come as standard. So for example, live sessions, live training, nobody turned up for it. Some of the live coaching stuff as well, very little response to that. And actually there was other things that they wanted instead from really specific checklist resources around podcasting about running interviews, that type of stuff. So really it's about talking to your members. It's about asking them exactly what they want and building a membership around that rather than following the standard models that you see out there. Make sure that you've locked down your USP very, very tightly. You've worked out what your customer avatar is and really make sure you speak to that person. Really, really think about how you can keep that person entertained, engaged, and provide them value on a consistent basis that they're not going to leave. 
I think that's the most important thing. People come for the content, but stay for the community. But I believe that, you know, you need some sort of tool. You need some sort of lock-in. And um, I, I like to think of membership sites as almost, you know, like a SaaS company. And, you know, great SaaS companies have really, really strong lock-in. Uh, like an example would be Basecamp. If you use Basecamp, you know, you've got all your projects in there. You've got to invite people. You're not going to leave once you've set up all your projects and then you do project management. Same thing's got to be the, it's got to be the same case for your membership site. When someone joins your membership site, you've got to make it so good and you've got to have some form of lock-in and that's how you truly build a remarkable membership site that keeps people engaged, provides them a ton of value and they'll never want to leave. It's harder than you think. Mm-hmm. It's a lot harder than you think it's going to be to get the sales. We know a lot of people who have quite a big audience, like a huge audience, and they've still kind of failed with the membership site model because they don't realize how hard it is to get the sales. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people think it's a no-brainer to buy into your membership site because it's much cheaper than working with you one-on-one. Might as well join your membership site. But I think in reality, the kind of sales mindset for people is just completely different buying into a membership site. And you're almost selling hard work in a lot of cases. They have to pay to be part of your membership. Then they have to actually implement it all themselves I think that's where a lot of people fail. So what we've learned is to try our best to get people in the right mindset from day one of how to actually implement the content we're teaching, making that as easy as possible for them. Yeah, you're making it a solution to the problem rather Mm -hmm. than selling hard work. Yes. Because it's not a tool that's going to do it for them, usually. It's usually some kind of learning. So if you can get that across on your sales page, then that's going to help you a lot. All right, so lots of awesome advice there for anyone starting their membership. I also asked these guys to share what impact running a membership site has actually had on their lives or on their business. The impact of having a membership site has been phenomenal for us. It's given us freedom, essentially, Mm -hmm. right? Freedom to have days off if we need it, freedom to work wherever we want if we need to, and that predictable income. Mm -hmm gives us the freedom to not have to worry about getting new clients all the time and pressuring people with sales messages. It's also really, really enjoyable and rewarding like to help so many people that would be struggling otherwise. It's that that's the biggest benefit to me, like just seeing everyone and working with so many amazing people and helping them achieve their goals. From all over the world. From all over the world. I think that's what I really Mm. love. Like when we get, clients from completely like countries we haven't even been to that yeah. is insanely um rewarding yeah there's so many interesting people out there yeah <laughs> well it's changed everything about my business in terms of mindset and approach to how i run a business i mean i've always worked hard so any job that i've been in or anything that i've done but now all the hard work is my choice as opposed to being demanded by other people so i work hard on the things that interest me the most and that will make the biggest impact to our members and our audience The second thing is more flexible time. And it kind of is related to the first point, but working hard is fine. But then taking time to relax and not feel like under the pressure of a deadline, like the deadlines are all me. Everything I do is is kind of my choice. So now I get the chance to spend mornings and afternoons with my son, spend time with my partner over the weekends and things like that. It's just changed everything in terms of how I manage my own time. So I'm busy when I want to be, the deadlines are set how I want them to be, but still working really, really hard. I think that's important to mention is that there's still a lot of hard work going on. It's just just distributed differently. Well, I can say that it has been profound. Having that systemized machine working for me has allowed me to quit my job about 10 years ago uh, travel around the world several times, raise a family. I've got four kids. Uh, now I travel pretty much once a month. I go overseas somewhere where I want to surf. And having that recurring income coming in every single month allows me to have a stable team to know that I don't have to stress or worry about making the next money and I never have to compromise. And the type of compromise I'm talking about is that adrenal gland pressure of doing things like product launches. That's not part of my model as I also don't have affiliates. So if you can take control and have a really good business model, you're going to have a wonderful business and it will change your life when you go to a recurring subscription income that makes up the bulk of your income. 
So that was Andrew and Pete, Chris Moore and James Schramko. And what they're talking about there, the freedom that comes from running a membership site, the control and the ability to set your own terms. How crazy for a business owner to be able to actually make decisions about the kind of work they want to do, about the type of people they want to work with. That sort of freedom, that sort of flexibility, that removal of stress, strain and compromise is such a huge, huge change from the average self-employed entrepreneur or what have you. And without doubt, I would say for myself and for Callie with the membership guys and with membersiteacademy.com. And that's the area where being membership owners has made the biggest impact for us. So to hear people like Andrew, Pete, Chris and James share that as their number one biggest area in which their lives or their business has been impacted. Again, it's so awesome to hear that other people are enjoying that side of running a membership site too. And that can be awesome on a personal level, but having a membership actually gives you so many more options on the business side of things too. So Björk, Nathan, and Jan Murray from janetmurray.co.uk shared the impact that having a membership has had on other areas of their business. It's just made my life so much easier. Somebody explained to me that having a membership site was a bit like having a car dealership. So you have your main product or service, so in a car dealership that would be cars but you're also able to do upsells and cross sells so you can also sell parts you can sell services you can sell valet whatever it might be so that's really how it works in my membership community I've got my my core product which is the membership but I'm also able to upsell and cross sell so I do live events I do about 14 a year I also have books I have a media diary and just knowing that when you go out with a new product you're going out to a warm audience or a community of people who already like what you do I think Seth Godin would call them sneezers then that's just so so reassuring to be able to do that to know that you're going out to people who are already interested in what you do a a warm audience it just makes life so much easier I think the biggest thing is it allows us to have confidence and to um, quickly launch other things. Uh, and the reason that we have confidence and the reason that we can quickly launch other things is because we have this group that is following along with what we're doing and is interested in what we're doing and we can speak to them directly, which is something that was a lot harder to do before. And the other thing is we really know and understand these people. So it allows us to create these other products and to build uh, other things that serve the need of the people that are a part of our membership site. So an example is we recently launched a plugin called Tasty Recipes. It's a recipe plugin for food bloggers. And we did that because we heard so consistently from our members that they were having issues with some of the more popular plugins that were out there. And so we said, this makes a lot of sense. We're going to spin this off as its own product because we hear from our members. So in terms of the impact that it's had on our business, it allows us to really, really understand a niche group of people, our tribe, in a way that we wouldn't if we weren't able to have those conversations with them. Um, A membership site has had a massive impact on my life and our business because it's allowed us to really connect with our core community members that, you know, want to do more than just consume our free content. Uh, We've been able to have meetups all around the world. I've been able to meet so many amazing people and I've really been able to see and hear the stories of, of how much of an impact our work has made. So that's been incredible. And our business, you know, recurring revenue is very, very important. I think for us, you know, a goal always is when we build our business, you know, we have, an, I guess, an online business media company that produces educational products and digital products, you know, across a magazine, courses, membership site now, and physical books. But for us, um, the goal has always been for our recurring revenue to match our operating costs And, you know, our membership site uh, definitely fuels that plus the magazine, which is subscription-based business. And then what you want to do is once you have your recurring revenue covering your operating costs, any one-off payments that you get for any other products, it's all pure profit. And it totally de-risks the business and really minimizes your chance of failure. And and you'll never put yourself in a bad position, especially around cash flow or anything like that. And, you know, the more recurring revenue you make, the more staff you can hire, et cetera, et cetera. You can raise your uh, operating costs and expenses. You know, quite often when people start a membership site, it's just because they love the sound of the model or maybe they've been part of a membership site and they've thought, actually, 
This would be really cool for my audience. This would be really cool for my business. But when you look at things longer term and you look at the wider picture of what a membership site can enable you to do, then the model becomes even more powerful. I love that Janet Murray talks about the fact that essentially a membership has enabled her to build an ecosystem where she has other products, she has events, she has other stuff going on. And at the heart of that is her membership. They are her rabid fans they are the people who will eat up anything else that she's doing anything else that she's creating i love that Björk talks about the fact that the membership has given him and his partner more confidence to actually bring other products into their ecosystem too because they have that passionate fan base they have that audience that they can tap into that verify and validate that they're actually doing good things and that they want more from them there's always that sense of risk of launching a new product or hosting an event because you don't know whether anyone's actually going to turn up or they're going to buy but with a membership site it gives you that foundation in terms of confidence to give you that foundation marker so the first people you take your product to are the people in your membership it gives you the ability to test out new things before you take them out into the broader world and that just gives you so much more flexibility in what you're doing and nathan there with founder which is a huge business has got so many different elements to it touched on the larger scale strategic side of things in terms of having that recurring revenue to enable you to scale and to grow and to really build something big. So the common theme here is having that ecosystem and how putting your membership at the heart of everything unlocks so many more avenues within your business for growth. And by far my favorite part of that whole area of having a membership site is just giving you that platform to find other ways in which to serve your community with other products, with other services, with events and so on. And that's something that was kind of echoed by Colin Gray from the podcast host and Marisha McGrawty from slpnow.com. Having a membership has impacted my life and business in countless ways. One, I have much less time than I did prior to starting a membership But there's one impact that really stands out, and that's the community that it has built. My membership allowed me to really connect with my audience, and that connection allows me to really serve their needs. And I get to engage in dialogue with them and really hear their pain points. And we get to collaborate together to solve those problems. And prior to starting a membership, I was selling one off products. And I was able to communicate with some of my customers, but the communication was very superficial and I wasn't, we weren't diving in like we are now with the membership and really knowing my members has made a huge difference for my business. First of all, it keeps them more engaged, but second of all, it helps me create resources and provide solutions to their problems in a very relevant way because we get to work on it together. And it's really fascinating to see that all come together and see the impact that it can have. And I think I'm better able to serve my audience and impact my field because of that connection. And that is not something that I think is possible in any other way. And I am so grateful to Mike and Kelly for their help in making that possible. It's helped me to focus down. We used to have lots of different products. We used to do services. We used to have a range of courses. Nowadays, I love the fact that I've just got everything inside this membership. Whenever MD sends me an email, whenever MD meets me at an event, anything like that, they ask me a question. Pretty much my answer is always, oh yeah, we work with people in our membership. If you want to work with us, just join up here. You can get all of our courses, all of our resources, and you can access us there for coaching. It's the only way to access us. So go and do it. (laughs) Makes things very easy. Now, so far, this has all been real positive stuff. Having a membership gives you all this freedom, gives you control that is lacking when you're trading time for dollars, removes compromise, removes stress, makes your business so much more loaded with potential. And that's all great. And you know we love memberships. You wouldn't have a podcast called The Membership Guys Podcast. You wouldn't run a membership about memberships. You wouldn't write a book about memberships, run events about memberships and all that if... You weren't huge, huge fans of that business model. But 
If you've been listening to us at all over the past hundred episodes of the show, you'll know that we don't sell the hope. We don't sell the dream of memberships. We spit on this concept of passive income and overnight success that so many internet marketing sleazebags out there are peddling. We give it to you straight. And this episode is no different because when asking people about the impact that a membership site has had on their lives or on their business, for some people, it doesn't always go the way they would have liked. Well, the honest answer is it's put a lot of strain on my business because it's been up and running 18 months and it really doesn't pay for itself because it hasn't grown the way I thought it would, the way I still hope it will. And that's for a number of reasons. When I started, I had to figure a lot of this out for myself. There wasn't Member Site Academy on the scene, although it probably kicked off just after I'd set up everything and got things going, but I'd already invested quite a lot of money. The other thing is I'm not necessarily the expert in my field. I'm more of someone on a journey. I'm building a house and sharing that information as you go. I think I've got a few secret weapons up my sleeve. For example, I run a video production company, so I've been able to make some really interesting videos. And of the members that I've got, they all seem quite dedicated to this. They all have renewed when it's come round to yearly membership. So I feel the core is right and I'm going in the right direction. But as to what has it done to my life and business, well, it's been a burden up until now. I joined Member Site Academy at the beginning of the year, and I'm hoping this will be the turning point because I just, I have this feeling it's going to hit a critical mass at some point where life is going to be easier. Yes, it was overcomplicated when I first set things up, and that's my own fault. But As it's gone along, I've changed things. You know, you could do a few months, you make some changes. As with any business, I suppose, you don't expect it to be a hit straight away. So I think that that's something quite important to take on board too, that you just keep on going, keep on refining, and you'll get there. Now, I want to thank Ben for his openness and his honesty in talking about how things have gone so far with his membership and the sort of impact that it's had. Listen, this is a real business and real business has ups and downs. Not every business works out the way you want it to. Not everything goes as quickly as you would like. And so we wanted to make sure that in talking to membership site owners, we were able to share with you the reality of this stuff. And yes, memberships are great. I love them as a business model. It's my favorite business model. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing it. It gives you so many potential benefits, but it's still work. It's work that's better leverage. It's work that's more rewarding. It's more fulfilling and all of that great stuff, but it's still work. It's still a business and business isn't always smooth. So thanks again to Ben for sharing his story so far and the impact that having a membership has had. Now, the final word on this question about the impact a membership has had on the lives and the businesses of our guests for the show. And you know, sometimes it's difficult to get these sort of true stories and true experiences of what it's like to run a membership site because so much of what you see out there is all about this six-figure launch, seven-figure launch, tens and hundreds of thousands of members, and isn't everything fantastic and isn't everything great? And here at the Membership Guys and at membersiteacademy.com, we've always steered away from that. We always try to steer away from the hype. We're about helping real people make real change in their lives with a real business that uses the membership model. Yes, we've had the honor of being involved in some very successful membership sites in the past, But the stuff that truly, truly matters to us are the stories from people where having a membership site has made a real, true, deeper impact on their lives than the usual sort of superficial stuff. I'm going to try not to cry. In February, my daughter was diagnosed with cancer. And without having launched the membership site, I don't know that I would have been able to actually continue my business. The membership site we had planned for a while. And so we had content ready and everything was ready to go. And I had my team that worked on everything. So we were able to make money from the membership site because the other thing that I was doing was running a group program and I do uh, courses and I really wasn't able to do those to the fullest extent because those take 
my personal time, having the membership site really saved me, saved my business. And it was challenging, but I got back on um, after a couple of months and I was able to get back in and jump back in with my team and keep going forward. So yeah, definitely the membership site changed my life and my business tremendously. Not much more I can add to that other than to thank Heather so much for sharing her story about the impact having a membership site has had in her life. The next insight that I asked our guests for this episode to share is what they would do differently if they were starting their membership site completely from scratch. And the funny thing is, when asking this, it hadn't crossed my mind or occurred to me that some of the guys who would be sending in their responses may have already gone through that process. And if you were to start your membership again from scratch, what would you do differently? I kind of did. I launched a new membership in October, tried a little bit of a refocus, changing our niche a little bit, different messaging. Like I said, I copied kind of what the gurus say, just did the same old model. Didn't work very well. So what I did was I asked my members, I changed it. I did what they wanted. I talked to the people that had joined. I talked to the people that hadn't joined. I asked the former why they joined, what they wanted. I asked the latter why they didn't join, what they didn't see that they wanted. And I built it based on that. And also, I actually built it based on what I wanted to. I realized that I didn't really enjoy organizing live training sessions every single month, chasing people every single month. And actually, that kind of stuff, there's tons of that out there in terms of podcasts. And there's not many webinars that you've seen hasn't been delivered on a podcast or for free in some way anyway. So chasing that kind of stuff, it's not very much fun for me. It's not that useful for the members. And therefore, I said, you know what, I'm not going to do that even though nearly every other membership out there does that type of approach. So design it for yourself and design it for your members. That's what I would do differently. I am actually building a membership site again from scratch. So I have the opportunity to avoid some of the mistakes that I made the first time around. Since joining the Member Site Academy, I've learned tons about engaging my members and about onboarding processes and also about building an audience, etc. Now I'm putting all those things into practice. I really didn't think about marketing when I started making the first course and membership site. I just got an idea about an online course to teach people how to work with Dragon Speech Recognition and I went to work. Well, it's working out right now, but it would have been very much more efficient if I had gone about it the right way from the get-go. In my case, it would be about simplifying the offering because I think I tried to do too much And it's not that it wasn't within my capability. I've been making videos since I was 11. I'm now in my 40s and I know how to do that. However, to have to do this on a consistent basis (laughs) was a huge strain to the level that I'm trying to do it at. And if I just thought more about, well, what is important here? And it's all about outcomes, isn't it? You want your avatar to achieve a certain outcome. You're offering a solution. And I think that there are ways of doing that that don't have to be too complicated. Yes, perhaps my in-depth video case studies are good further down the line for when things are successful. It's a good idea, but maybe it was the wrong idea to implement early in the day. What I will say is, having been able to keep up with it just and had some really good feedback about it, if I can just keep going and turn the corner, I haven't given up on that feature but it has made life a lot, lot harder. So starting out with a simple offering, which really you can answer yourself. So that would be my top tip anyway. So interesting to hear from people whose insight into what they would do if they were starting again from scratch has actually come through the process of starting everything from scratch. And that message of simplification, of responding to audience needs, of actually thinking about their member experience and what is going to serve their members as well as what fits for them rather than just following a blueprint, rather than just sticking with the standard or the norm or the model used by somebody else. Such useful insight there from Colin, Yannicka and from Ben. 
it's so, so important to remember that when it comes to membership sites, there is no one size fits all approach. What works for one site, for one topic or for one audience won't always necessarily translate to what you're doing. And that could be for a variety of reasons. It might be because of your own particular preferences in terms of the content you're creating, in terms of how you teach. It might come down to your audience, whether they are actually right for the techniques that you're trying to implement in your membership actually understanding who it is you want to serve and how you want to serve them and building a membership that reflects that is far more important than trying to copy what you see someone else is doing or trying to find some sort of silver bullet or winning gimmick that you can apply to your membership and that focus on who your customers actually are and understanding them carries through to the insights that Jim Schramko, Andrew and Pete and Nathan Chan shared about what they would do differently if they were restarting their memberships today. The main thing I'd do differently is I would target better. I would actually have minimum criteria for people who I want to have a membership for. I would have them apply to join or at the minimum a entry price that filters out people who are going to be a bad fit. So in my case, I'm very specialized in coaching people from six figures to seven figures. That's my sweet spot. Someone coming to me doing uh, $100,000 or $500,000 a year is very quickly going to be able to get to a million dollars. So I've decided not to deal with people who aren't prepared to invest at least $300 over six months in getting help with me. And by doing that, having that filter, that meant that I get really good quality customers. And also by scrapping my monthly payment, I've reduced billing frequency. So we have less challenges around collecting the money and we have a longer term commitment customer. So if I were to start from scratch, I would set stronger filters and I would have gone to that intermediate to advanced customer base a little bit earlier. I think we would have definitely started Atomic as a more niche down version of what it is now. We definitely. kind of started Atomic quite broad and kind of made it more niche as we go and as we'll we go. We'll teach you everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we definitely found it a lot harder to sell in the early days mm-hmm. than we do now just because of kind of niching it down and making it a bit more specific what you're going to learn when you join Atomic. So Exactly. I would probably go for a much higher ticket price point. So I'd probably look at the $97 a month and look uh, to attract people that have to fill out an application form and just have a little bit more of a focus around the community um, and, and look for like a certain certain kind of entrepreneur to join our membership, not just kind of open doors, let everyone in because I think more than ever, if you want to build an amazing curated community, that's really, really important. And I think with these membership sites, you know, people stay for the community. So you've got to foster that community however you can. I think, you know, higher ticket item, people take it more seriously. People are going to invest their time. Um, the, you know, the higher the, pro- the monthly price or yearly price is. I'd also have a bigger focus on selling yearly as well. I think that's really, really important. And uh, yeah, I'd also think a lot more heavily around just some sort of tool. Like I said, around, you know, having a, treating your membership site as like a SaaS-based product and thinking about lock-in. That's really, really key. Thanks to James, Andrew, Pete, and Nathan for what they shared there because it's instinctive when you're taking something to market, when you're trying to make money and get your business off the ground to want to sell to as many people as possible, to try and bring in as many members as you can. You get obsessed over the numbers game about how big your email list is, about how many members you're bringing in. But if they're not the right fit, then chances are they're not going to last in your membership. And running a successful membership isn't just about bringing new members in through the front door. It's about hanging on to those members. So making sure that you have a thorough understanding of who it is you want to serve, a thorough understanding of what that person looks like, thinks like, what their motivations and priorities are. And you make sure that your marketing is set up in a way that is actually targeting these specific people and filtering out the people you don't necessarily want inside your membership. It's all about the long game and having that sort of more targeted approach to your niche or niche if you're from the States and focusing on that from the get-go, that's the way to go. 
Now, earlier in the episode, when we asked these guys about the one piece of advice they would have for anyone starting up a new membership, we had people talking about how you need to make sure you give yourself plenty of time and breathing room, but also that you're not letting your plans languish, you're not spinning your wheels trying to get everything perfect. And this is something that Björk from Food Blogger Pro and Avalon Yarns from avalancakeschool.com experienced for themselves and would change if they were starting from scratch. If I were to be able to start all over again with my membership site, which I've got to say, I've thought about a million times because who hasn't thought about all the things I would have done differently. It all boils down to one thing. I would have become a member of the member site Academy from the get go. I would have found this amazing resource and I would have cut my time into a quarter of the time because I would have had all these amazing courses and resources at my fingertips. So especially for all of us that aren't like super techie and that are trying to do this on their own, they literally give you step-by-step instructions for everything, everything. They make it simple because I've got to say in hindsight, There are so many things I would change and there are things that I still might need to change and would have been so much less of a pain if I would have had Mike and Callie at my side and the amazing community that is always there going through the exact same things you're going through and are so happy to help you and be a supportive ear. The one thing that I would do is start earlier with the content and I wouldn't do a really big pre-launch. We did a really big pre-launch and then we worked hard for three months doing the content Instead, what I would do is I would launch the site as live. Uh, That would be the initial launch. And then I would slowly but surely build up that snowball as opposed to doing a really big pre-launch and then having to produce that content over three months. So this just emphasizes what we're talking about earlier about not trying to get it perfect, just getting it going. Memberships will evolve organically over time and it's much easier to get direction on where you should be going get direction on what your members actually want while you have members in there paying you giving you feedback where you can observe their behavior see what's working see what's not so this idea of just starting slower so executing quicker but starting the growth of your membership a little bit slower letting it evolve more organically rather than trying to get absolutely everything conceivable in place and then launching because even if you do get everything the way you want it before you launch you will still need to change it as time goes on based on member feedback so if you're going to have to change it anyway why not execute a little quicker open the doors and allow things to grow organically and develop organically rather than giving yourself all this extra work and pushing things back further and further and further while you try to get everything absolutely perfect perfection in this game is a fool's errand execute quicker if i was to start my membership again from scratch i would make sure i had a clear or clear as i could idea of what type of content and the structure of the content that i was going to try and create so instead of it being a a bit of a melting pot of all different types of content, I'd really try and get my value proposition as structured as possible before I started creating it. And then in doing that, really manage expectations in terms of the customer on the other end, because it's really good for the customer to understand what they're getting every month and get used to that. Uh, so they can fit it into their lives and and know when to you know look forward to the content content that you're creating. So then, if you are doing upsells or cross sells, down sells, whatever it may be, that they clearly understand that that is an additional thing on top of the membership, and that you're not going to throw it in there as well in with it. They're, they're used to that. Whereas if you just if you're just throwing everything in there and then suddenly you turn around and say, hey, I'm going to do this other thing and I'm going to charge you for it because you've been throwing everything in there from the customer's perspective. Well, they're thinking, well, you normally throw everything in here. Why is this an additional cost on top of my membership and not inclusive within it? I would think bigger. I think that changes everything. Um, so that's starting to take place more now that we're kind of come out like the minimum viable product stage. I think we're now, it's more confidence, thinking bigger, which gets you to think a bit more about automation and scale and all of those things. So I would probably 
go back, I'd like to teach myself to, or tell myself to think bigger, have more confidence, don't doubt yourself and understand that this thing that you're about to do is absolutely possible for you. And it's possible that it'll be a great success too. So that was Scott Devine from scottsbaselessons.com as well as Chris Moore from CMA who we heard from earlier. Really emphasizing to close things off about the importance of playing the long game, of having an idea at least of where you would like to take this thing and allow yourself to think bigger, to be more ambitious about where you want to go. This kind of ties back to what we were saying just before about trying to get everything in place and trying to get everything perfect. Quite often, this is because people are trying to build a final product. They're trying to build a membership that they're going to have in year five, all ready to go from day one. You have to understand memberships are a long game business model start with what you need now and evolve it over time if you have an idea of where you want this to go and you're thinking bigger as chris was just saying there in terms of things like automation and scale and all of that sort of stuff it's okay to start small with your eye on the prize for further down the line and then build and enhance as you go you don't have to have every possible thing you want in place from day one Have an idea what the destination is. Allow that to inform your strategy in the shorter term, but don't allow it to stand in the way of actually getting things up and running and building that initial momentum that will eventually evolve and take you to where you see the final picture of your membership being. Think about the long game. Be ambitious. Think bigger, but don't allow it to obstruct what needs to be done right here, right now, to just get things going. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed these insights into the minds and the experiences and the worlds of all these membership side owners. I just want to say a big, big thank you to Chris Ducker, Ben Adam Smith, James Schramko, Heather Crabtree, Christina Peters, Chris Marr, Shannon Rogers, Björk Ostrom, Andrew and Pete, Colin Gray, Nathan Chan, Yannicka Dendrak, Jan Murray, Marisha McGrody, Avalon Yarns and Scott Devine. And most of all, I want to say a big, big thank you to you. My dear, beautiful, smart, intelligent, amazing listener for being with us for 100 episodes. Because of course, I'm assuming every single person listening to this show has listened to every single episode of it. And if you haven't, that's what you can do today to help celebrate episode 100. Go back through the whole back catalogue and listen to it. I'll wait. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? Okay, okay, maybe you do it after this show, you do it in your own time, that's fine. What I would love to ask you guys and what would absolutely make my day as we celebrate episode 100 of the Membership Guys podcast is if you enjoy the work that we're doing here, if you find it useful, if it's helped you in any way, please do pop along to iTunes, leave us a nice shiny five-star review and say a few nice things. Let us know how the podcast has helped you, what you enjoy most about it or any of the thoughts you have on it. Only if you want to, of course, and obviously only if it's going to be a five-star review. You don't want to be that one person who leaves a four-star, but then everything that they write in the comments should be a five-star, but for some reason it's a four. No. None of that nonsense, but I'd be so, so grateful. Both myself and my partner in crime, Miss Callie Willows, would be so, so thankful if you could take the minute or two that it'll take you to pop over and leave us a nice, shiny review in celebration of episode 100. That's it from me for this episode. Thanks again to everybody who has been involved in today's show. I really do hope that you've found the insights that have been shared in this episode useful. Please hit me up on Twitter at Membership Guys or in our Facebook group at TalkMemberships.com or if you're an Academy member, give me a shout inside the Academy community at MembersiteAcademy.com. Let me know what you think. Let me know what's been the standout comment or the standout insights from the episode and if you do leave me a review over on itunes which please go on it's our birthday it's 100 episodes speaking of birthdays actually this episode goes out literally the day before my 34th birthday so come on if that doesn't sway you if that doesn't sway you if you do leave a review please give me a shout on social media let me know that you have so that i can thank you personally for all of your support thanks so much for the past 100 episodes here's to another 100 starting from next week when i'll be back with another installment of the membership guys podcast 
If you've enjoyed today's episode of the Membership Guides podcast, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Member Site Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement and advice, the Member Site Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership website. So check it out at membersiteacademy.com.